Yeah, and I think what you touched on there is like the the overhearing of of information. We're so lucky in one way that like so much information exists about powerlifting online now. Mm-hmm. I know, like Arthur has said, like when he started powerlifting, there was barely anything online about mm-hmm. weight cutting, peaking, attempt selection, or all, all this information that is just generally more available now and that can be a really good thing but it can also be a dangerous thing if the wrong information is shared or not even the wrong information the wrong information for the for a certain person yeah um and that ties kind of back into that right of passage thing people thinking what they're doing a weight cut Mm. i should be doing one Is, is is that what's done and feeling like you you need to do it to be a power lifter and be mm. part of that experience. And I, it, there's a certain amount of that. Like it's like, I've seen it now with the, the, some of the group that I coach out of abs, they'll see what some of the more advanced lifters are doing. They're the lifters yeah. that are in a sport a long time. And they're like, ah, that's how they warm up. That must be what I have to do. Or <laughs> yeah. they set up their deadlift this way. Maybe that's like the secret to adding 10 extra kilos, you know? Yeah. And I, I get it. I get the idea, but it's just t- generally not how human beings work. No. But if I was to ask you then, like you mentioned during the conversation, there would be signs for people that like, okay, maybe the weight cut's not the right idea for you. And then just given your level of experience working with athletes, are there any like particular signs or red flags you would usually identify? People say, okay, maybe doing a weight cut's not the right thing for you. Is it something they're saying? Is it something that's happening in their training? Is it something they're doing? What might it be? I think there's a, a lot of things that come into play here. So my problem is that sometimes people start thinking about their weight cut like, what they're going to weigh three weeks out from their competition. Mm. You need to think about it a a long time in advance of that. Because ideally, if you're doing a weight manipulation, you don't want to be doing that for a large amount of your weight. Mm -hmm. So let's just say, you know, you compete in 93s. You can probably cut from 95 or 96, but, you know, 97, 98, 99, Mm. that cutting from that high amount of weight is going to damage your performance. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't do a 93. It just means that you might need a bit more time to yeah. prepare for it, diet down, do your weight manipulation. So how much weight that you have to lose and how much time that you have to do it in mm-hmm. is a really big thing. Generally, we say don't cut more than 5% of your body weight um, if you're doing a two-hour weigh So that's really simple calculation to do. Just get your weight class and multiply it by 1.05 and you shouldn't really be doing your like acute weight cutting measures from anything more than that. I think on top of that, if you have any sort of poor relationship with food, any sort of disordered eating, dieting brings those things up for you, it's probably not the best idea. Mm. And you should really be working on having a good relationship with food and making sure you're well fueled instead of bringing all this on top of it because it's probably going to end up putting you in a worse off place Mm. um and then i think the other kind of red flag not to do a weight cut is if like you've done weight cuts before and it's just not working for you anymore Mm -hmm. in terms of your transfer of your performance from the the platform or from the from training to the platform and what i mean in that situation is you've ticked those other two boxes your relationship with food is is good you diet down to a good range above your weight class. You you don't cut more than 5%, but you're still not seeing a transfer over. Sometimes this happens with people, you know, who are very lean. Mm-hmm. They don't have it, that room to cut as much weight. That's probably a sign that, you know, you should you should go, go up a weight class. But as I said, there's so many things playing into it. Yeah. It's, it's not clear cut. It's all about what's your starting point and all those factors but I would I would say they're probably kind of three things to mm. to be like probably probably not for you 